All right, Alexander, let's talk about uh, Greek Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis' his interview with CNN with Richard Quest. I believe that's CNN International. So it's a bit different than the CNN that people may be familiar with, the Chris Cuomo's and the Don Lemons. This is with CNN, Inter- <laughs> yeah, with CNN International. Uh, this is a good interview, and it deals with the uh, with the migrant crisis, the row between Turkey, Greece, Turkey, and the EU, and trying to push the the migrants into uh, into Greece, and I think it's good because it introduces people to Prime Minister Mitsotakis, and a lot of people may not have heard him speak. They may not know much about him. He is newly elected, and I think it gives a good introduction as to who this man that is leading Greece is, and what his views are with regards to the migrant crisis and with Turkey and what's happening right now on the borders between Greece and Turkey. Real quick, Alexander, let's jump jump into some statements that Erdogan has made recently. He said, and I quote, Hey, Greece, I appeal to you, open the gates as well and be free of this burden. Let them go to other European countries. And I'm taking this out of RT, by the way. And Erdogan is also going to be flying to Brussels on Monday. We'll, we're filming this on Sunday night. So on Monday, he's heading to Brussels to meet with the EU elite. And Erdogan says that he's hoping from to get from that meeting different outcomes. In other words, I think he's hoping to get his payoff. And I think he'll get it. But uh, we'd like your two cents, Alexander, as to what you think is going to happen tomorrow. What do you think of, of Mitsotakis is, uh, is interview with Richard Quest of CNN International? And we'll play that interview for everybody right after you give your comments, Alexander. And real quickly, I want to pull up something before you get into it that I caught on uh, Akkad Daily, the YouTube channel Akkad Daily. Carl Benjamin, great channel. Uh, I recommend it. He pulled up a tweet from... Uh, a Greek journalist, Aris Rusinos, I believe is a Greek journalist. And let me read you that, that tweet, Alexander, because it's relevant to what Mitsodakis said to CNN. Countries of origin of the 252 migrants and refugees detained in Greece so far per Greek government. This was on the 5th of March. Afghanistan, 64%. Pakistan, 19%. Turkey, 5%. Syria, 4%. Somalia, 2.6%. Iraq, Iran, Ethiopia, Morocco, Bangladesh, Egypt, 5.4%. So there is are more Turkish migrants, according to these numbers, trying to cross over than Syrian. Alexander, before we play the video, your thoughts. Well, the first thing to say is that Mitsotakis, who you see uh, giving this interview, and I think, by the way, it's a fluent and good interview. I mean, he's got all his facts at his f- fingertips. He's fighting Greece's corner. He's articulate. And as, as you can see, he's very much in control. And that reflects the political situation in Greece at the moment, where he is the absolute indisputable leader of the country. Uh, uh, the left in Greece, the former series of party, has basically obliterated itself uh, and should not be taken seriously. But Mr. Mitsotakis, capable though he may be, um, is nonetheless absolutely part of the Greece, Greek elite. His uh, uh, family, the Mitsotakis family, have been uh, uh, there as a major political force in Greece for decades. Uh, they've been prime ministers, they've been involved, you know, the, and branches of the family have been very powerful in Athens. They're also mayors, very powerful mayors, mayors of Athens, exactly. Uh, they're also major power in Crete. Uh, so, you know, we're talking about absolute political uh, oligarchy. And as such people tend to be, he is extremely closely aligned with the United States. He's redirected Greek foreign policy towards a very strong alliance with the U.S. And, of course, he is completely loyal to the European Union. I think people should understand that. Uh, Now, that is important because you see how even a person like this has made it absolutely clear that Greece is not prepared to take any more people, that it has already had to absorb far too many uh, uh, migrants coming from outside that um, we've had this disastrous policy within the European Union that any person who comes to to the European Union and wishes to claim asylum 
does so at the country of entry. So what in effect that means is that they're all, when they come to Greece, they are stuck in Greece. Greece can't just decant them according to European Union rules to Germany or wherever. And other countries in the, e in the e EU anyway have made it very clear they're not prepared to take these people and they're not prepared to uh, relax those rules. So he is standing firm for Greece. And I was pleased to say or see also that he made the point, which I, I do feel very, you know, fairly strongly, given some of the things I've been reading in a few places, that you know Greece is not a country where you know there's massive xenophobia, racism, or anything of that kind. It's a small country by EU standards. It's a relatively poor country where we've been through in Greece a major economic crisis. We simply cannot take any more. So he's put the Greek position, I think, very clearly and very straightforwardly. And bearing in mind that this is a completely loyal person to the uh, uh, Western alliance, to NATO, to the EU, you can understand how solid feeling in Greece is about this issue. I think you said on another program, Alex, that you've just been in Greece recently and you have never come across such complete unity on a subject as you have on this one. So I think people need to understand that and understand very clearly that Greece is not going to shift of its own accord. And I think on this issue, it has friends. But, you know, we see the master manipulator and blackmailer, Mr. Erdogan. You see how he is provoking Greece, says to the Greeks, let all these people in, let them flood across the European Union throw out the asylum rules, throw out your border policies, flood Europe with refugees. Greece is not prepared to do that. Greece remains loyal to the European Union, but it will defend its borders. And one of the most interesting things that I thought came out of that interview is that Mitsotaki spoke about, the, he used the word sovereignty to describe Greece's position. Um, that is, you know, an important point to make from someone who, as I said, is a loyal supporter of the European Union, of NATO, uh, you know, a, a friend of Merkel's, a friend of the United States. Now, let's turn now to Mr. Erdogan. You will see from those statistics that all this propaganda that we've been hearing over the last couple of weeks about this vast army of, you know, a million people fleeing Idlib province, coming to Turkey, flooding from Turkey into um, uh, uh, the European Union, or, or I mean, th there is no reality to this. Uh, these are economic migrants, overwhelmingly, from various parts of the world. But in fairness, people who come from Afghanistan are probably also, to some extent, fleeing from the war there. Um, but the reason they are being drawn to the European Union, I've said this before many times, is that the European Union has not sorted out its migration policies. It's left it to the frontline states like Greece to bear all the slack. It's given the impression that it's prepared to admit people. I mean, the signals that Angela Merkel gave in 2015 were disastrous, and it has exposed itself to blackmail by Erdogan. Like people, and this is what we're going to see tomorrow. Erdogan tried to blackmail Putin and it failed because he made all kinds of threats in the Idlib province that he was never prepared to see through. But of course, with Putin, he's up against the strong leader of a strong government. He's going to come to Brussels on Monday, and I'm sure the blackmail will be partially successful. He's going to come away with more billions of EU uh, uh, of euros it'll be the payoff and that absolutely sets up the situation for a payoff to happen again a few months or years down the line when it suits Erdogan to turn the tap on he's now got a a, a nice income stream for himself whenever he needs money all he has to do is to move people to the border and that the EU will pay him as I have said many times, the way to deal with a blackmailer 
is to tell the blackmailer to go away. The worst way to deal with the blackmailer is to submit to his blackmail. But that is what I predict is going to happen when Erdogan comes to Brussels on Monday. Greece is holding the line on this and it's proving very difficult for Greece with its resources stretched to breaking point. It's getting some support from some EU member states, countries like Austria. It is not getting the kind of support it should be getting from the big EU states like Germany. We've discussed how Merkel has remained almost completely silent on this issue. And uh, at the same time, the EU policy is once more to pay uh, Erdogan off in the hope he will go away, when all that does is encourage him to come back and demand more. All right, very quickly, Alexander, before I play the, the interview with Mitsotakis to CNN, Mitsotakis mentions in that interview that most of the people trying to cross over are not, and I repeat, are not of Syrian origin. He calls it out as well. I am, I'm just struck by that number. Afghanistan, 64%, Pakistan, 19%, Turkey, 5%. Alexander, very quickly, if you even know, if you can even answer this, how did these people end up in Turkey? Well, that's an excellent question. Very, very good question. I mean, I would point out there is a steady flow of people and drugs, heroin, across Central Asia, through Turkey, into Europe. That has been a regular traffic. Alex? So we have this, we do have this regular pattern. And I suppose in some ways, what they're probably doing is they're going out of Afghanistan through countries like Kyrgyzia, Uzbekistan, and the rest, where the borders are not well controlled. And they're ending up in Turkey because Turkey, for its own reasons, wants to maintain very open borders towards these countries because the uh, 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 Turkey, Erdogan to be precise, also has an extraordinary policy towards the countries in Central Asia, which he sees as Turkish speaking, and therefore he wants to extend Turkey's influence there also. And what that is doing is it's setting up the situation for these big migrant flows from Afghanistan and such places to Turkey itself. But note, there are more Turks wanting to go to, group, to Europe than there are Syrians. Most Syrians, my impression is that most of the Syrians who have become refugees are, are middle class people who, if they could, would return to Syria. I know this has been controversial with some of our viewers, but I am convinced that this is true. Um, um, the people who want to go to the European Union, some of them are fleeing the wars. There are There is a terrible war underway in Afghanistan, no question about it. But many of them are straightforward economic migrants. And you know the five percent, for example, of um, amid amid that sample, who are Turks, or overwhelmingly they will be economic migrants. It's absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. Well, the reason it's happened, I come back to this, is because the European Union has not made very clear what the rules of admission and refusal to the European Union are. They've created this whole uh, uh, um, narrative that it's people fleeing from the war in Syria. And the result is everybody else thinks that they, you know, from places like Afghanistan or Turkey, thinks that they can, or Somalia, wherever, thinks that they can come on, come on to this, uh, 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 join this train and come in because they're not getting a consistent message out of Berlin and Brussels. I tend to think that a lot of this, listening to Erdogan's words where he said, Greece, let them in and let them go into other European countries, let them, you know, move up and out of Greece and into other European countries. I tend to think that a lot of this is Erdogan's way of trying to just seed division and hate and chaos inside the European Union, get everyone fighting, get everyone, you know, bitter and upset with each other because Europe has never opened the door to allowing Turkey into the union. 
I, was I think there's also a little bit of, of I am going to stick it to you guys kind of attitude from Erdogan. Uh, there is. And in fact, and I, I have to say here with some calls, I mean, the Europeans, I mean, he doesn't like the Europeans very much because they've been condescending to him. They made it very clear that Turkey will never join the European Union. Um, they, they made it all but clear at the time of the 2016 coup attempt that, you know, they would have been happy to see him go. They were very, very slow, in, uh, uh, you know, speaking out in his support, even though he was a democratic leader and what was happening was a military coup. So understandable that Erdogan is, uh, uh, you know, doesn't like the European Union and partly he's trolling them, as you, but also partly he is trying to create divisions and trouble between them. Greece would be reckless utterly reckless and irresponsible to play along with that because all that would happen is that it would isolate Greece from the big European powers at a time when uh, Erdogan is making claims on Greek territorial waters. So that, I'm sure Mitsotakis is not going to fall for this. But on top of all that, um, it, 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 it's undoubtedly the case that there is some degree, as I said, of genuine resentment and anger towards uh, the EU, that doesn't alter the fact that the EU should stand firm when it is being blackmailed. By the way, Mitsotakis talks about blackmail. He says it's very clearly. He uses that word. He says this is not a you know a proper migrant flow. This is the the or this is Turkey manipulating this whole uh, 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 this whole issue for its own purposes turning the tap, the tap on when it suits it and turning the tap off when it also suits it. You can't, you can't let yourself submit to that sort of thing. But I predict that tomorrow that's exactly what the EU leaders are going to do. Okay, let's play the interview. CNN with Kyriakos Mitsotakis, Prime Minister of Greece. Alexander McCurse, thank you very much. What we're dealing with is not really a migration or a refugee problem. It's a conscious attempt by Turkey to use migrants and refugees as geopolitical pawns to promote its own uh, interests. The people who try to cross uh, into Greece are not people who come from Syria. They don't come from Idlib. They've been living in Turkey for a long period of time. Most of them uh, talk uh, uh, Turkish fluently. They've been fully supported by the Turkish government uh, in terms of uh, uh, the Turkish government providing transfer for them to get to the border. And of course, Greece is doing what any sovereign state has a right to do to protect its border for any illegal crossings. This is what we have been doing. This is what we will continue to do. Now, obviously, we have seen over the past hours uh, increased tension on the borders. There have been attempts to actually burn down the fence that we have. Uh, there have been uh, numerous uh, attempts to throw tear gases on our troops. So I'm afraid this is a constant and very systematic provocation on Turkey's uh, behalf, which has nothing to do with the plight of these, uh, of these people. Uh, they're being used by Turkey. Uh, and. Uh, and, and this is, a, you know, the result is the scenes that you will currently see on the Greek-Turkish border. It may be, that may be the cause as seen, but the, res the result is that you are the ones getting, to some extent, the blame and the bad uh, reaction. When we see the sort of pictures that we saw last week, where it is your forces of one sort or another who are engaged in stopping them, and it creates ugly scenes, and you get the blame. Well, I don't see why we should be getting any blame for something we've publicly said that we will do. We have every right, Richard, to protect uh, our borders, and this is exactly what we, what we do. We were not the ones who initiated this crisis. Uh, we were not the ones who encouraged people to cross uh, into Greece illegally. Uh, and frankly, you know something, this is a country that has, uh, over the past uh, years, accepted hundreds of thousands of migrants and refugees. We've opened up our homes, we've opened up our hearts. And it is totally, totally unacceptable as a prime minister of this country uh, to be accused of not properly treating these people uh, in times of great uh, need. I mean, Greece has demonstrated its humanism uh, throughout this crisis. But what we're not willing to do 
if we're not willing to uh, engage uh, in uh, a process by which uh, another country uh, systematically uses and abuses these people to try to send them uh, across the border. Now, uh, in terms of uh, uh, the methodology and the methods that we, we use, we have not used uh, any sort of excessive force and we're always reacting. We're never initiating uh, in terms of uh, uh, responding to the provocations that have taken place on the border. Do you see the events of the last week as either endangering or revoking in, in a practical sense the EU-Turkey agreement following on from 2016? Uh, Richard, right now, let's be honest, the agreement is dead. And it's dead because Turkey has decided to completely violate the agreement because of what happened in Syria. Turkey has an obligation to stop people reaching the coastlines and it has an obligation to do whatever it can to uh, contain uh, the illegal smugglers uh, and prohibit people from illegally crossing into Greece. This is exactly what the agreement says. And Turkey right. has been doing the exact opposite. They have assisted, systematically assisted, both at land and at sea, uh, people in their effort to cross into Greece. So, um, on the other hand, I've been public about acknowledging the fact that Turkey um, has also borne a big uh, uh, um, uh, burden by hosting millions of refugees and I've always been willing to support Turkey in this effort. But this is not going to happen, Richard, right. uh, under a situation of blackmail. Uh, Europe is not going to be blackmailed uh, over, uh, over this problem by Turkey. Mr. Erdogan needs to recognize that. Mr. Erdogan needs to stop um, uh, being uh, the, the instigator of fake news. Um, uh, people apparently, according to the Turkish uh, minister, hundreds of thousands of people have already crossed uh, uh, into Greece. There are completely false accusations in terms of what's happening the border. So we're not the ones escalating uh, this conflict, but we have uh, every right, Richard, and I will continue okay. to do so, to protect our sovereign um, uh, borders. Uh, uh, we've succeeded in doing so, and we'll continue to succeed doing so in the future. Prime Minister, will you indulge me and just answer one or two questions, if I may, on coronavirus and the seriousness of this situation? And what, Prime Minister, you might wish to see happen at a European level? It seems, seems as if this is on the verge of becoming a pandemic. Look, um, this is a, uh, you know, obviously a very serious uh, issue and we need a coordinated European uh, response. I think we've done whatever we can within, within our capacity uh, to contain this problem as much as possible. Um, uh, we haven't had a single death yet uh, in, in Greece from uh, coronavirus, but we know that this is a problem that is going to, uh, is going to spread. Uh, obviously, coordination at the European level um, would be most welcome, but this is also a question of speed and every member state needs to assess its own peculiarities and address the problem um, uh, speedily and by taking the necessary measures. Where I think we need more European response uh, is in mitigating the economic consequences uh, of this outbreak. Uh, it is very clear, Richard, we've discussed this before, that uh, you know, even before the coronavirus hit us, monetary policy has reached its limits. And this is a time to take a hard look uh, at how fiscal policy can help us uh, alleviate the pressures on growth that will inevitably uh, occur as a result of this outbreak. So where I expect more European coordination is clearly on the financial, on the economic side, where I do hope that the next Eurogroup uh, is going to be more proactive uh, in terms of containing the economic damage, right. which inevitably will, uh, will occur as a result of this outbreak. Now, on the first part of our interview concerning the migrants crossing from Turkey, we've received this response from Turkey's communications director who has responded, and I'll read it in full. We categorically reject Prime Minister Mitsotakis' allegations and we are deeply concerned about the ill treatment of and use of lethal force against refugees by his country's law enforcement and border security agents. Turkey hosts more refugees than any other country and it has been a bulwark against irregular migration from Syria and elsewhere. The European Union has failed to keep its promises, including financial and aid and voluntary humanitarian admission under the 2016 agreement. <clears throat> As a result, Turkey had to divert its resources away from stopping the refugee flow to Europe and instead prepare for a potential influx from Idlib. Instead of playing the blame game, we urge Greece and the rest of the international community to address the root cause of irregular migration, namely the ongoing civil war in Syria.